Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is having a fabulous Tuesday. Ooh, we've got some information to cover, and uh, yeah. So, you know, along with a few updates. So let's just jump in with both feet and get there today, shall we? Let's go. I want to start off thanking my subscriber, Carol, for this picture above. She said she thinks that this is mirroring their future. I got to be honest, I completely agree with you. Good picture compilation. Spot on, moving on. Next up, this Twitter user put this up and it caught my attention because remember, Megan just gave a speech on family. Apparently, Megan's uncle Joseph died in 2021 and Megan's aunt confirmed that she never sent a condolence card or even called her. She also confirmed that none of the other family members got an invite to the royal wedding. But Joseph used to spend a lot of time with Megan. Megan was very close to the family. So it's just more family that she's just, you know, shoved off. What a shame. She didn't go to the funeral. She didn't even send a condolence card or make a phone call. Wow. Moving on. Moving on. Articles are coming out pointing out that Harry is talking to Oprah two years after the interview that blew his entire family apart. And it did. Now, a few things. They're saying that this was a star-studded event. It was not. The only A-listers there were Ellen and her wife and Oprah and, of course, the host. Uh, that's about it. Now, they seem to be on good terms. Everybody was talking to everybody. And, um, yeah, but here is the interesting thing that I think nobody's noticing or that nobody's talking about. Except for Kevin Costner, Every single person there is having a image issue. You have Ellen who lost her job due to being a bully. You have Oprah who's been the subject of waves of hate because she hired private firefighters to make sure her house didn't burn down and then gave what would be a pittance of her money to help rebuild Maui while asking other people who are living hand to mouth to help hand money over. Every single person that was there, except for Kevin Costner, is having a crisis with their popularity and their, um, you know, how the public perceives them. Yep. Oh, and FYI, a big thank you to Remy Lot Sauce, who found that Megan's outfit is a rewear. That's rare. She wore it to Portia and Ellen's vow renewal. Mm-hmm. Now, it's been suggested that the reason that Megan was wearing a gray blazer is because, as you can see... Catherine wore a gray blazer last week and she wants to copy her. Well, you guys, of course it was inevitable. Here come the memes. Enjoy. Now, of course, it didn't go without being noticed that Megan is still missing her engagement ring. The story of, oh, the stones were loose and it had to be fixed, it just, just doesn't hold anymore. Everybody's wondering where the ring is. And, of course, Harry, this entire time, except for a few pictures, he looks very uncomfortable. You know, he's surrounded by people who are all accused of being bullies. <laughs> Moving on. All right, let's go on to this story now that came out. We all know that Harry flew to the U.K., uh, for the Well Child Awards. And of course, we everybody was talking about where is he going to stay? Where is he going to stay? Well, we found out that he made a request to stay on royal property and he was told, no, he wanted to stay at Windsor Castle. Okay. Uh, the entire family is at Balmoral for the you know, holidays, that's where they were. And he was told you can't request on short notice. You have to put in a formal request to stay on property and to see his father. Now, keep in mind that Charles cannot just pick up the phone and call Harry. He has no way to reach him because Harry keeps changing his phone number. So 
Harry, who's supposed to return to the UK in January, will still be allowed to stay on property, but he has to give suitable notice. And I get it. They have to prepare the area. They have to get rid of some staff. They have to sweep the area for bugs. It's not like if you just came to my house and I opened up a door and said, here's my guest room. It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, and I, I totally understand, especially the way Harry has behaved. But what I don't understand is <laughs> the way Harry has talked about his family and the way he's talked about the queen and the way he's talked about Windsor, why, especially Windsor Castle, why would he want to stay there? I don't get it. So, yeah. Anyway, he wants to stay there in January. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, here's what he wrote in the spare about Windsor. He and Meghan wanted to move into Windsor Castle initially, and the Queen said no and sent them off to Frogmore. But then in the spare, Harry wrote that Windsor was a tomb, the walls filled with ancestors, etc., etc. So why in the hell would he want to stay there? You know, what it comes down to is, again, they're multimillionaires. You want a home in the UK? Go buy one. Just spend millions and go buy a house. Truth is, Frogmore Cottage was free for them. That's why they wanted it. Mm-hmm. All right, we have another puff piece to look at before we move on to one of our big stories. Meghan Markle is set to share the screen with Julia Roberts. No, she isn't. This is a lie. This is another one of those articles that WME puts out to try to get you the, you know, her name associated with the big names. In Megan's dreams, Julia Roberts probably doesn't even know who she is. Moving on. Moving on. You guys remember when Harry and Megan did their pseudo royal tour and they went to the, you know, the World Trade Center, then they went to the school in Harlem, then they went to the Vax Live concert. Well, I did a video on that back in September of 2021. So just to catch you up, I'm going to show you a snippet of that, okay? Watch this. Megan and Harry are going to a school in Harlem, a very poor school. 94% there get free meals. And what does she do? She wears $7,500 worth of clothes, not including the jewelry. Again, very tone deaf. It was just, you know, you don't do that when you have super poor people. Anyway, she sat down to read her book. Here's a video of how it went. For those of you who didn't see it or catch it, if you look on the ground, she brought books for all the kids, probably from the closet at home, where we already know that she has a lot of books that didn't sell. And she probably took a thousand for herself to do this exact same thing. The next thing that happened was Harry decided that he was going to start hugging the kids as they were leaving. Remember, this is COVID. The parents can't even go into the school. And here's what happened. And please also note, as you're watching this, the photographers and the videographers that are capturing all of this, sure hope they got parental permission. Now, for those of you who didn't catch it, Harry was actually very rough with the kids at the end and literally shoved them off. Now, I have a video of it closer up to show you, but I had to remove the sound because there was some guy on there cursing like a sailor. But anyway, here's the video. Just watch this. Now it was time for them to leave. And there was a guy across the street with a megaphone yelling at him. Now, let me just say, I don't agree with what this man said at all, but I'm leaving it in there to show you guys. Okay, here we go. Your body's toxic load. No vaccine mandate. 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 No, 
this is when things start to get interesting because when people looked back at the photos of Harry sitting talking with the kids, they noticed there was a wire coming out of his pocket. So Harry was basically taping everything the kids were saying, everything the students were saying. I don't know how legal that is. And interestingly enough, here's another photo of the wire coming out of his pocket. And when he was asked about it, you know, kind of like the pinky ring where they just didn't make a comment or what they said was an, a lie and then they were caught in the lie. When this was seen and a Sussex person was asked, first they had no comment and then they said it was footage for the Archwell archives. Yeah, I have an island I want to sell you people. This went on the next day, I might add. There's the same guy with the camera. I mean, it's obvious that this is going to be Netflix footage. Now, the other thing that somebody suggested to me is that they're trying to show the queen that they're not just sitting in their house doing Zoom calls, that they're actually working and they've got boots on the ground. Uh-huh. And by the way, this is all taking place during the five months of maternity leave that they were supposed to be taking because the baby's only three months old and they left both kids behind. Yeah, very interesting to me, but okay, let's go on. When they were done at the school, they went to a Harlem restaurant that is already af uh, associated, I might add, with Archwell. And Archwell made a 25,000 donation to its COVID relief fund. And they had chicken with waffles for dinner. Now, as they were leaving, once again, that, that wire, that microphone was seen sticking out of Harry's pocket. I'm telling you, they had better have gotten permission from all these people because that is such lawsuit material. You're not allowed to tape people without their permission. So later on, one of the parents did a video, which I did a, a video, again, another video, and I put the link to the mother's video in my video so you could hear it. However, YouTube removed it, okay? So I did another video talking about the Harlem parent that was speaking out and um, saying, you know, here's the link and you can click it. Obviously, that doesn't stand anymore because it was removed, but... Watch this now. Harry and Megan's trip to the school in Harlem. Now, I have put a link up in the box. I cannot put the video in here because it's, you know, a copyright issue. But you must see this video from one of the parents. She talks for a little over a minute, one minute in this video, and she lets you know that Megan told the kids that she was a princess interesting for somebody who doesn't care about titles there's a lot in there just click on the link it's a little difficult to get through with her language but just watch the whole thing it's shocking and fyi she's not a princess she's a duchess even somebody asked catherine once if she was a princess and catherine said no i'm a duchess interesting and FYI, she confirms that not only were the children told when to smile, when to scream, when to act excited, she confirms that the children were taped without parental consent. Now, this parent is claiming that the two boxes of vegetables that were dropped off by Harry and Meghan were two boxes of organic rotten tomatoes, which were expired from Whole Foods. And she mentions Meghan's book and that she was basically there to promote the book, which we all know, but... Then it gets more interesting. This post was then put up by the same parent where she talked about the folder that was sent home. Now, I remember folders coming home where it asked for signatures for things and for donations. So these parents all got a folder with a paper inside asking for a $5 donation to a charity company, but it didn't say specific, specifically where it was going. So essentially what happened was the parents donated the $5 and then they found out later on that the donation, the charity, was Meghan Markle's charity. So basically the parents paid for the donated books of the bench. If I were a parent living in Harlem and my child was asked to give that $5, I would have said no. Neil Sean did a little, you know, blurb that you know how he does. <clears throat> Neil Sean did a little blurb on it and pointed out that somebody called the school and the principal said that that money went for a different charity, not Archwell. Of course, who am I going to believe? <laughs> the, the principal who's obviously a big Meghan Markle fan? No, I don't think so. Well, the whole point of all of this is that it's come out now that the Archwell Foundation wanted the school to sign a clause that bans anyone from making any negative 
comments now or in the future. So basically the fact that the vegetables that were delivered were donated from Whole Foods and they were past the expiration and they were rotted, nobody's allowed to know that or nobody's supposed to say anything about it, okay? So apparently three days before the school visit, R12 representatives sent to the Department of Education in New York an appearance release with the gagging clause and said, you know, you might want to run this past your attorneys. So an email from the New York City press secretary asked for the best way to get it ag uh, you know, agreed. We don't know if it was signed. The two sides exchanged thoughts about how to put the language in the Department of Education press release, but um, they wanted to make it less quote unquote promotion-y. And um, so of course, Archwell says standard practice was followed. It's not standard practice to try to gag children from talking about what goes on in the school when somebody like that is there. Now, as I also just told you during this visit, <clears throat> they went to the World Trade Center area and apparently they banned British newspapers, including The Sun, from that event, but they legally didn't have the right to do that because it's publicly owned. If I were them, I would have shown up anyway. These people don't have that kind of power. Don't give it to them. And of course, we found out later on that beyond the rotten vegetables, they also pledged a washer dryer. We don't know if it was ever delivered. Uh, and of course, we found out later on, Archwell wasn't making any money. So they probably bought, you know, the $300 units, whatever. All right, moving on. All right, we have another puff piece that's just, quite frankly, so stupid. <laughs> Meghan and Harry have a celebrity status. They don't need to trade on the royal name. You know what the problem is, you know what that is? Anybody can be a celebrity, but not anybody can be a royal. Stupid puff piece. Moving on. All right, we're going to end with this article. I was like, really? Meghan Markle is concerned for Harry because he's tied himself in knots over the royal family feud. If she was so concerned about Harry and the feud, she would do something to fix it. This article says it best. She thinks that he needs to pull himself together and look forward because there is no way out of the Hollywood game at this stage. That's their life. She loves it. Nothing he can do about it. I completely agree, which is why this is a total puff piece. If she would totally say something or do something with the royal family, reach out to them, she could totally end this riff. She doesn't want to. <laughs> All right. All right, really quickly, I just want you to know that we know that Rumble stood by um, Russell Brandt and now Burger King. Guess what? I'm not eating at Burger King anymore. ASOS, which is a clothing company, and HelloFresh, which is, you know, that food, uh, forget them people, are have pulled their ads because they won't demonetize Russell Brandt. Now, you guys should know that Russell Brandt was making, according to the article, 33000 a month from Rumble and $1.2 a year from YouTube. And we know that YouTube demonetized him. I have had enough of this crap, this woke stuff. Until this man is charged with something. Could you imagine somebody walks up and just accuses you of something and suddenly you lose it all, even though you haven't been to court and there's been no charges? You, you just can't do that, people. All I'm saying is if he's guilty, let him be found guilty in a court of law. That's all I'm saying, people. All right. All right, you guys, yes, lots of information. Don't forget to leave those comments. And if you've donated to my coffee funder through the thanks button, thank you so much.